Hello everyone, my name is Brian Martinovich. I'm the Director of Customer Services with Login VSI, and um, I'm gonna help you get started with your evaluation. Once you've downloaded the package of your preference, you're gonna go to your hypervisor, in my case, ESX, go to Create Register VM, select OVA, specify a machine name, add your OVA file, walk through some basic configuration steps, finish, which will then import your OVA package. Um, you'll then boot that up. We'll walk you through a, a few steps. Those steps will consist of the following. You can also find a step-by-step -step guide on our knowledge base. And as we've already imported this, the next step would be configuration. So you'll be presented with a prompt to set your administrative credentials. You have an option for uh, specifying the configuration for your network. You'll be asked to log in one additional time. The OVA will then boot, and then you will um, go to your favorite web browser and either enter the URL or the IP address, depending if you have DNS configured. So within the environment that has access to the same network, you can bring up the web interface. This is the first time that you've booted this device. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. You'll be presented with a, a EULA. Um, you'll also be presented with the various um, steps to get you started, but we're going to expedite that. I'm going to explain to you um, what you'll need to do to execute your first application test. So you might be tempted to go to test configuration immediately and start configuring a test. Um, pick your connector version, uh, specify name, specify your URL, your resource, your display preference, and then you might notice that you don't have either user accounts or launchers. So what you're going to need to do is go to the launcher section. You can see I've achieved a little bit here. I have two launchers currently active, but the way that you'll um, create launchers is you're going to download uh, the MSI files. You can see we have two different Windows versions here. Uh, we also have a Linux package for this as well. So if you're interested in that, please reach out to our support team at support at loginvsi.com. Um, one other thing about launchers is that you can put them in groups and you have an option for either filter or selection. Filter will let you specify um, wildcards to match certain criteria. We have more information on this in the knowledge base. I won't go into depth, but that'll surface all of your launchers as they're automatically added. Or you can do a selection group and select the launchers uh, manually. So I will explain that in a little bit more detail here in a second. Um, one other thing you need to do is configure your user accounts so you can bring any user accounts that already exist. A lot of our customers will use a PowerShell script to create their users um, in a type of uniformity with uh, similar passwords. You can add those user accounts into our management console either individually or we supply a bulk option. Uh, you then have the same concept of groups for, uh, for your individual user accounts. What makes a virtual user a virtual user is the fact that when they log in, they execute our logon component, and you can find some details about that. Um, also, information uh, more in depth inside of our knowledge base. We'll supply a, um, a command line string here that you'll put paste into your favorite um, uh, script or command line string. Uh, a lot of our customers will store this in their net logon location on the domain. I can show you an existing an example of that now. I can show you an example of that now. You can see there's my logon component that I downloaded from my management console. You can see the script that I've created here. It has a call to the net logon and the host name of my management server. I've now added virtual users into my management server. You can see my virtual users, my launchers, uh, and last but not least, application scripts. We ship with a bunch of office-based application scripts out of the box that covers about 
90% customers interactions within the office suite. We also have um, some browser based scripts. We have a workload template section as well. So a lot of our com community contributors have provided some specific examples. I like to demonstrate the Google Earth example in case you wanted to add some multimedia centric interactions. You can see what that looks like here. As our virtual user does a little tour of the US. Down at the bottom, you'll notice a .cs file, the way that you add application scripts into our management console is you'll give it a name, you'll specify the path, and we can either do Windows-based or um, internet browser-based interactions. And then you have the ability to upload that CS file. Once you got your accounts, once you got your launchers and your applications, you're ready to go to configure your first test. You'll select the type of environment that you intend on testing and give that a name. I've already configured an environment for Citrix here selected some groups that I've already specified in this particular example. It's an Azure deployment running Citrix in the cloud. You can add application actions into the workflow that makes up that particular test parameters. And now you have your first test configured. So if you need additional help beyond this, please reach out at login VSI uh, or to login VSI support at support at login VSI.com. Again, my name is Brian. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly as well. Until next time.